Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's going to be a review, roundup, ranking style of a video where I am going to go through some of the things that I have been using and hauling as of late and I'm going to let you know my final thoughts about them. What do I really feel about them? And I will say there is a bunch of fails this time, more than usual, just a bunch of products that I'm just not very fond of and can't really recommend to you. And if you haven't been before, this is your first video here. Hello, my name is Angie. I'm such a lover of beauty makeup. I love everything beauty makeup related. I love trying a bunch of stuff so that I can let you know which things are worth trying out and which things you can just leave in the store. And there's a bunch of the latter option in this one. And if you want to see more makeup videos, don't forget to subscribe because I upload at least five videos a week. <laughs> This video is extra exciting because this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Thank you so much HelloFresh for coming back and sponsoring my videos. I have been a happy HelloFresh customer for quite some time. I was a HelloFresh customer for about six months before they reached out to me, asked me if I wanted to work with them. What I really love about HelloFresh is that it is very flexible. It is very tasty and it's also giving me back some time and like decreased my stress. Because here's the thing, I don't hate cooking, I really don't, I hate going to the grocery store. HelloFresh will deliver the groceries pre-measured to your door and you can just put it into your fridge and they just give you recipe cards so that you can follow the recipes with such easy pictures and even though I actually went to chef school but I still will look at those recipe cards with the pictures and I'll be like, so what do they mean when they say diced tomatoes? How big are they supposed to be? Listen, the pictures are amazing. <laughs> love the pictures so it's just very easy and also since it's pre-measured we end up throwing away so much less food because we get exactly the amount we're supposed to be using no more do we have condiments or broths or stuff like that in the fridge that remain open and unused and eventually you have to throw them away so we are throwing away so much less food and we're saving so much time because i just really don't love the whole planning for dinner and going to the grocery store. And it's so easy to just log on and see what options there are. You just click what options you want to have. There are so many tasty options. And honestly, HelloFresh is just as good as going to a lunch restaurant and getting food. This is restaurant quality food. There is no way that we would have continued to do HelloFresh if the food wasn't delicious because we are picky eaters. Okay, maybe my husband is more the picky eater, but we're kind of picky with what we eat. We don't want to eat just anything. And they're so flexible. We can skip a week. We can change the proteins. You can go pescatarian, vegetarian. You want to have more healthy options. You want to have quicker options, which is great now that we're back to school and everything. I don't have kids, but I know a bunch of you have. There are so many options with HelloFresh where you can pick an option that is like 30 minutes or less love that i try to pick at least one of those so when you're having one of those stressful weeknights you know work is late and all of that you can have dinner on the table in 30 minutes and it's just amazing i truly recommend it so go to hellofresh.com and use the code and 65 for 65 percent off plus free shipping that is hellofresh.com and use the code and 65 for 65 percent off plus free shipping. And if nothing else, click the link down below and see all of the options that they have because I'm telling you, there are so many tasty options and they keep rotating the food like in and out, especially according to season and stuff. And there's always something really delicious on the menu. And I love that. So thank you again, HelloFresh, for sponsoring my video. I'm per usual, very happy to be working with you. Now let's get into the ranking and let's start at the bottom and work our way to the top because... I'm looking at the pile with the bottom stuff and it's not looking good. Also, my eyes are running because I have been doing four different eye looks um, the last 24 hours and I, I think my eyes are just like, what are you doing? I am wearing the new Teresa is Lethal palette and a video on this look is already live on my channel and I will leave a link to that look in the pinned comment together with what I'm wearing on my face in case you're interested in that. And all the things that I'm going to be talking about is going to be in the description box in case there's anything of this that you're intrigued by or you want to see more info or if you want to see if I have any codes or anything like that, everything's going to be in the description box. Okay, so I don't know how many things these are but I'm going to put up a number here at the bottom where you can like 
we can start the countdown to, to place number one, what has been my favorite as of late. And I have to put this at the bottom and it's only this color. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in Sugared. This one came out with that collection with the eyeshadow palette that she had. And I, I wanna use that one one more time before I review it, but so far I really like that palette. But this color is just like neon. Is this already not smelling great or? No, it actually smells sweet. My bad, it smells sweet. It's me, it's me. I haven't had enough coffee. This color is just too neon-y. Like it, it's, it looks, it looks bad on the lips. It is a white based like corally neon and it looks atrocious on the lips. I don't like this color on me at all. It was not flattering. It literally looked like my lips were floating plus this specific color did crack on my lips and it didn't look good. And I think it's something with the color because I have not had that problem with any of the other liquid lipsticks from Jaclyn Cosmetics. So this one, this color, I was hoping it was gonna be a nice orange, but this one was a bust. I did not like it. Next, I'm gonna put these liquid liners from ColourPop and I'm gonna put these here. These were sent to me as PR, by the way. The Jaclyn one I bought myself. These were sent to me as PR and I feel bad for saying that I don't like them, but these are so inconsistent there has to be some problem with manufacturing of these some look great and some swatch great and you can like do really nice line with lines with them and then some are like dry and almost clumpy you know when you put old milk in your coffee that consistency there's something about these even though they're brand new some something went wrong with the manufacturing of these i just can't recommend these and i I can't really understand what the point of these were because I didn't think that their colored felt tip liners were bad. Did we need these? I thought those were okay. Like th those are, I still use those as like colored liners. I like those better than these. I mean, the white and this one is literally see-through. Where are you going with that? Where, what are you doing with that? Transparent white liner, hmm? And I feel a little bad because I think that this was the first PR package I got after getting back on ColourPop's PR list and I, don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. This one is one that I also like. I don't think that this is good at all. And this is the Essence Welcome to Miami eyeshadow palette. I, here's the thing. These are very lackluster. These are very weak, very thin. They're just so uninspiring. And it's not like you can't make them work. But you can get better eyeshadow than this. This is sold, I bought this at Ulta. You can get better eyeshadow than this at Ulta for a similar price tag or less. So there's like no place where I can recommend this. I, why would you buy this when there are so many good affordable eyeshadow brands out there? Don't get this one. I literally do not get this one. Get something that's actually good. Because it's not like there is a good affordable drugstore eyeshadow at this point. There really is. You don't need to put your, like don't do what I did. Don't buy this one. Next I'm gonna talk about something that I'm actually wearing today and this is the lipstick that I'm wearing today. I just really don't like these Vice something something lips. I don't know. Do not use near fire, flame or heat. Am I flammable? Here's the thing, I love this color. This is in color PDA. I will link this one both in the description box and also in the pink comment because I'm wearing it. It's so sticky and heavy. It's supposed to be one of those shiny ones that don't have transfer, but you can all see that that's not 100% true. I just think that this is so uncomfortable on the lips. It is so, it feel, I feel it. It's like a sticky feel film on my lips and I just I don't like the feeling of this on my lips. I would rather reapply a glowy lipstick once every 20 minutes over having this heavy sticky feeling on my lips. It's just not comfortable. I don't like it. There's nothing specifically wrong with this product, but I feel the same about this product as I feel with the Essence one, even though like this one, there's nothing wrong with the quality. This is the Glow Shots, Ultimate Glow Shots by NYX. This is a liquid eyeshadow that NYX is having. Uh, it's just nothing special. It just, as this dries, this looks like any other shimmer eyeshadow. And it makes me go like, why? This is a single shimmer eyeshadow. There's nothing about this formula, about this packaging, about it being liquid that 
there's nothing special about this. It just looks like a shimmer eyeshadow. Just get a shimmer eyeshadow. Just use normal powder eyeshadow. Just get an eyeshadow palette. This doesn't bring anything special to the table at all. Now we're getting into personal preference because I've heard a lot of people that really love the concealer from REM Beauty. And the first time that I used it, I have it in shade 10N, which is a light medium with a neutral undertone. I liked it, but this one, I can only use it on my face. If I use it under my eyes, it is too heavy. It makes my under eyes look like a old ball sack. Like I can't do it. I can't, I, I, no, it's, it's really shriveling up and I have to really be like prepping. Like I have to use eye cream and I have to like, I have to do a million different steps that I don't have to use with other concealers if I'm gonna use this under my eyes. So I feel like this one is more of a spot concealer kind of a thing, which is something that I don't use because I rarely have breakouts. I didn't have acne as a teen. I didn't have pimples as a teen. I have one or two every other month when it's that time of the month that's it that is it i i actually got my period yesterday and i had one pimple here do you see that do you see that that thing that's it i don't need a separate product for that and that's just me speaking oh my god my eyes are tearing i'm dying i'm dying that's it i'm dying end of the world i'm dying <laughs> Again, we're coming into preference, and this is the Pixie on the Glow Bronze. And I think a lot of people would really enjoy this. I have it in shade Rich Glow. And it's actually really nice. And it has a little bit of a red tint to it, so I can blend it up on my cheekbones and use it as a bronzer blush hybrid. It has a little bit of glow to it. It's not sparkly. But for me, it doesn't dry down and I like something that dries down. So this is more of a preference thing. If you have dry skin and you want to try a bronzer that's more on the red leaning, because the shades are also a little weird in this. Some are like straight up blushes and some are like more... Br don't, come, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying it how it is. But this one, the Rich Glow, I probably think that this, because it's also not super, super pigmented, this will probably work for a light to a medium. Uh, it has a little bit of shimmer, a red undertone. It just doesn't 100% dry down, and I don't love that. I don't love that. I thought I was gonna love this ColourPop Shell Shocked Pressed Powder Palette, but it is just very underwhelming uh, this blue one we talked about this blue one this is a super shock and it's just shy i don't know it's just all of these shades they're just they're not super spectacular and they're not super pigmented you can see this is all just very sheer and light i will say if you love the kind of eyeshadow trends that are going on in like korean makeup the more shimmery light wash of color kind of a thing you might actually like this because it is more a sheer wash of color and shimmer and you might like it i as you can tell i'm not all about the sheer wash of color kind of a thing so for me this is a palette where i thought i was gonna love it but it turns out it is just not for me. It is just a little bit too sheer washy washy color glitter. I don't love that, but I know others do. But for me, this ends up being an eyeshadow palette that's just a little bit meh. These are the liquid highlighters by Unearthly Cosmetics. I think these colors are really, really fun. I especially love this one. That's like a peachy pink gold. It looks really beautiful on the skin. It's called Gilded. This is the one that I've been using the most. And also this one that is a gold to a pink. I tried to get this off. It didn't work that good. It's called Basque. These don't also 100% dry down. It takes quite some time for them to like dry down to something that's not sticky. And then they continue to be a little bit... I'm not gonna say sticky, there's just a little bit of a tack to them, and I don't, again, love that as with this one. I prefer something that becomes, if it's not gonna 100% dry down, I prefer it to feel a little creamy over a little tacky. I hope you understand the difference, but these are really beautiful colors. If you do not mind something that is not 100% like tack free, you might really love these. They are really pretty on the skin. Uh, I just have other liquid highlighters that I love more than these. Then we have this uh, Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip. 
I think this is really good, but the reason why it's ending up here is because I think that this formula disperses too much color. It is too soft. You get too much on the lips that it almost looks a little gooey. So when I put this on, I have to dab it on and like do like this so I don't get too much off. Because if I swipe like this, there's going to be a thick layer on the lips. It almost looks like I put on like lip mask for the end of the day I'm going to bed. I have mine in grapefruit, beautiful color, beautiful formula. I just think it is a little bit too soft so I end up putting too much on if I swipe. That's the main reason. How, why do I look like I've been in a massacre? Okay, I go, need to go and wash my hands again. But the other one, the one that's a plumping, we'll talk about that in a bit. That one I like more. It's a little bit more firm. What? Be right back. Is this just my thumb now? I guess this is my thumb now. Lovely. Next on the list, I'm gonna do the ColourPop East High. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I think that this palette is a little predictable. This is not my favorite Col uh, Colourpop palette. I have another one in a bit that I like more than I like this one. And also I have one matte here and one matte here that are really hard pressed and I really needed to swirl my brush in there to really get color to come off. And I don't love that in eyeshadow palette. I think that this eyeshadow palette is very safe. It is very high school musical-esque but with that being said i don't think that this is like the best color story they've ever had if i'm gonna put it like that i will say though and i'm not gonna like really uh review those here because i've already reviewed those formulas from before but the red uh, just the tint this one it looks unused but i've used this several times and the red blush i'm actually wearing this blush today no i'm not because i changed the blush because i'm using the uh, Teresa's dead and lethal cosmetics but i used it earlier today this red blush in playoffs and this one that is called uh cello these are so nice and i've used them so much and i highly recommend them if you love high school musical and you also think that that color story is a little bit meh these two are beautiful and this blush i've used it three days in a row now that's how much I love this blush. I think this is the best red blush in my collection. Yes, I said it. Stunning. It's so wearable and sheer in the best way. Beautiful blush. I had to like just mention it that that one has become a favorite in my collection. Now I'm going to mention the Vive face palette. I actually think that this face palette is really good. It's really pretty. It is just a little bit... You can tell for me, it's not super exciting. I did bring this one on vacation and I didn't really miss anything. I don't think that this highlighter is like super... I, I want something that's like a little bit more blinding than this. It's, it's pretty, but it is a little subtle for being a powder highlighter. If I want something that's this subtle, I'd prefer it to be cream. So at least it melts in better with my skin. I think this is good quality. I think I just, everything is just so same samey. It's all so effortless and very user friendly. It's just me and my personal preference. I want something that's more poppy and I was hoping that it was gonna be more poppy when I got it, but it's not. But there's nothing wrong with the quality. It definitely isn't. It's just a little bit too mellow for my personal preference. I don't mind this product at all. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I think this is a really nice product. It is a little bit too peachy. I think that, I think that this is a really good product, but this one doesn't really smell like anything. This one becomes very sticky on the skin if you do not if I use this on its own or if I use too much of this mixed with foundation. It has to be a little of this or just a little of this on the highest points and then put like foundation over. This formula is sticky on its own. Like my face will be sticky and I don't love that. And I will say that I prefer, and you, you probably agree with me as well if you've tried it, I prefer the Auric formula so much more because that one actually has a little bit more tint to it and it's not as sticky and it just looks more like your skin. So I think this is good for being a drugstore item. I would have loved it more had it not been so sticky in the formula. Or maybe it's just my skin because I don't have dry skin. Maybe you feel differently if you have dry skin. But it's just very sticky. And I can't use this all over my face. Or like just 
I need to mix it with something. Otherwise, it's an absolute no-go. Like my hair will stick to it. I think this is a really good formula, but these are colors that I don't use as highlighters. This is the Michaela Part 2 collection with Glam Light. And this is a very blue, a very green, and a sparkling greenish gold. And all three of these highlights are very blinding and a little bit more on the sparkly side. And even though I think they're all really good, I don't see myself using highlighters like this a lot. I will say though that I've enjoyed playing with these two in my eye looks, especially when I've been playing with the Glam Light palettes that I think are amazing. The This one is just a little bit too out there for me. Had this one been a peach or like more of a lighter gold, not so sparkly, I think I would have used this one more. It's just that all three of these are shades that I don't reach for. And for that reason, this palette just becomes a little bit too redundant for me, even though the quality is nice. I actually don't mind this foundation at all. This is the Makeup Evolution IRL filter. I have mine in F7 that is described as a medium, but it is a little bit too light for me. I don't think the shade range is off. I think how they describe shades is bit off because I should not even be a medium. Light medium, that's totally fine, but a medium being too light for me, then something is off because yes, I'm not fair, but I'm also, I'm not a, a medium tan. Like that, there's no world where I am a medium tan. So I feel like the shade description could use a little work. We'll say this looks beautiful on the skin. There's nothing wrong with the undertone. It's just that it's a little light so I can bronze it up. The main reason why this isn't on top is that this one doesn't have the best longevity on me. It becomes very glowy on me after just like five, six hours. And I have a normal skin type that is a little oily around here on my nose. You can see I'm a little oily here. I live in Austin, Texas. It's very humid here, but I definitely do not have like oily skin all over and I definitely do not have dry skin. If you have dry skin, maybe this will be better for you because it is a natural matte but not flat finish that I think might be more dry skin friendly. I think it looks beautiful. This will be a filming foundation for me. I will. This is not a foundation that I will be like, oh, I'm going out and about. I can trust this one. I can trust it. It didn't break up on me, but I'm gonna have to babysit it because it becomes very, very glowy kind of fast. This is a really nice product. I know this is a neutral palette and it is a mini palette and it's coming quite high. And this is the Tartlet Mini Jewel. The Mini Tartlet Jewel. I brought this on vacation. I think this is really pretty. It has three uh, mattes. It has one that is a traditional shimmer, and then it has two more high shine metallics. I think the formula of this is really beautiful. And this is, I bought a couple of things from, from Tarte. And I was really impressed with all of them. I think the formula of all of them is really beautiful. There's a couple of things where I'm like, like the other one, like too much product comes off. Or like, of course, I wish that they would have more colorful options, which they never do. I get it, it's Tarte. But I will say the quality is really nice and I like the composition of this one. I like the packaging of this one. And this is a perfect like matching, mixing and matching palette for me. Because this is more of a plummy neutrals and I really love that mixing it with pastels or mixing it with colorful shades. So I have really been enjoying it and I think this is really good quality and this is a good little mini neutral palette for me in my collection. This is the Glaminatrix Nocturnal palette. I think this palette might be discontinued. Let me see if I can swatch a couple because some of these palettes, I'm at least in the future, I might save some swatches so you can see. But here I'll do a couple of swatches. This is a really pretty palette that they have. I really like the color scheme. I will say Glaminatrix is really known for having amazing shimmers and I don't feel like these shimmers were as good as some of their shimmers, uh, oh my god, usually are. Like, it's not that they're bad, but like they have definitely produced better shimmers than this before. These are meant to be like multi-chromes and somehow they became a little bit drier and almost sheerer. And like, not that they're bad, but it's more a they can do better. And I know they can do better. Like I own Glaminatrix shimmers that are better than these. I really like the color scheme of this one though. I really like the mucky colors mixed with some of the brights. I think that's really pretty. I have done some looks with this. I think I have one on YouTube and one on TikTok slash Instagram. I mean, they're really pretty, but as you can see, they're not super, super spectacular. 
which is a shame because like I said, I know they can do better than that. So I think that this one would have been even higher had the metallics been their normal amazing metallic formula. These are the multi-chrome liners by Unearthly Cosmetics. I don't know if you can see anything from here. I can see if I can swatch maybe one of them. I think that these are incredible quality and really affordable like affordable for being multi-chromes. If you didn't want to get like a single shadow, maybe you just want to use them as a liner. I will say if you already own multi-chromes, you can use your multi-chrome shadows as a liner. But if you were in the market, let me see if I can use this. If you were in the market, uh, this is gem for a multi-chrome liner. These are really, really nice. Um, let me see. Like I said, this one is in gem. Like they are opaque. The applicator is really good and they have a pretty strong shift and they're not sheer. Like you can see like one stripe gives a really good shift. And this one, I see blue here and you see green. These are really nice. I'm very impressed with these. I do have a code with Unearthly Cosmetics. Like I said before, all the codes, I'll put them down below and in this and Jessica. I'm impressed with these liners. I have used them a bit and I will say if you were in the market for it, I will recommend these. But like I've said before in my videos, if you have multi-chromes, you can just use like a one of those brushes, eyeliner brushes, and just put it on top of black eyeliner and you will get a similar effect. But still, I can't deny that these are good quality. This is the ColourPop palette that I think is the best of the ones that I try here, although this is by far the best ColourPop product that I've tried in these bunch of products. I've tried a bunch of really good Colourpop products after this as well, but this blush is just so nice. So this is the Bon Voyage palette, and this is the collaboration with BT21. This is... I like the quality of this one. I had a really good time creating looks with this one. I have done one look for Instagram slash TikTok. Uh, I think it might be here as a short on YouTube as well, and I did one look here for YouTube. I think the palette is nice. I wish this palette had one more dark color. I wish that there was like a dark plum or a dark midnight blue or just something else that was dark except this gray. You can work with this gray, you can deepen with this gray. I just wish it had one more dark shadow since it has so many shadows. But on the other hand, this is in collaboration with like, I think this is like a Korean cartoon show based on a Korean pop band, boy band? Can you tell? I don't really know what I'm talking about. And I mean, you can see the colors here. It's very bright. It's very light. It's very fun. So, I mean, it is represented here. So I don't think that that is bad, but I still would have wished for one more lighter shade to just give that extra. And also three press glitters. We don't need that. I understand that some people do love press glitters, but maybe one of the press glitters could have disappeared and we could have had one more matte dark shadow. I'm, I'm just saying. I like the look that I did though. I thought it was good quality. It's a little big, but the packaging is really sturdy and nice. Colourpop has been doing really, really good packaging this past, well, year or something, year and a half maybe. There was this point, I feel like it was around the Barbie collection that they did last summer, where they really went from good packaging to great packaging, like really thinking about the details, and this is no exception. Actually, this is my favorite Colourpop palette as of late. This is an all matte mini palette. I've used this so much. This is the Hello Hollywood. I think this is in collaboration with Jasmine Chiswell, if I'm not totally mistaken. Her name is not on this anywhere though, so I feel a little bad for her, but this is really nice. This dark brown is not the most pigmented color like it's not the most pigmented color, but if you start with this one, you will definitely get this color. But these are, overall, these four are really impressive, like pigmented matte colors that really pack a punch. This one is good. Not amazing, but good. This white and this light blue, they're so nice. I brought this one as well when I went on my vacation and I had so much fun with this. I've reached for this matte white so many times. If you are looking for an all matte little companion palette, Really do recommend this one. It is an affordable small palette from Colourpop. I think I forgot to say, but Colourpop actually also gave me a code. My code is in Jessica and you can save some money off when you order from Colourpop. Really do recommend this one. I'm so happy I bought this one. This one I bought myself. I have just been using it so much. If you mix these two together, you will get a light blue color that is like a pastel blue, super pigmented. I've been using that as an inner corner highlight. Oh, 
I had so much fun with this one. I am wearing Lethal Cosmetics today, but now we're gonna talk about the Lethal Cosmetics One Up palette, and this is my hair. This, look, first at this, I mean, yes, it is a little bit of a weird packaging, but I don't feel like it's super bulky. It's still somewhat rectangular. It's not too big or bulky. It's really slim and nice. And I do like this like one up arcade thing. And then it looks like a controller on the inside uh, with like the uh, player one and the player two. I have done one look for YouTube and one look for Instagram slash TikTok with this palette. This is really nice. I really like this one. I think my favorite palette from Lethal, and I've said that before, is the Nightflower palette, but I think that this is number two, especially this shimmer here that's called Final Boss. I have to stop myself from not just reaching in to use this one because it is this, oh, you can see, it's like almost like a mint blue purple shift and there's a little bit like green purple blue it's you can see the green and then like the purple periwinkle blue mint oh it's so pretty really like this one final boss now i have that everywhere was that needed angie was that needed but yeah that that shadow i have to stop myself because both times i did look for instagram i used that shadow and i was like you're supposed to be using all of it. <laughs> really like that one. I think that one might be one of my favorite shimmers from Lethal. And also this one that's from the Teresa's Dead palette. I think this is also one of my favorite shimmers from Lethal Cosmetics. It's this one called Space Trash. It's what I have on my lid. Those two, those are so interesting and so beautiful. And I love how they look on. And yeah, I think that this palette is really, really nice. If you like the Lethal Cosmetics quality, I think you would enjoy this one. Now we're in the top seven. How exciting. I have to mention the Michaela Pot 2 10 Pan Palette. This color story, I think this is a smart color story. I think the quality is just so good. It is so pigmented i have a video if i have any corresponding videos that i can find or like that makes sense i will link those as well down below in case you want to see them in action and it's almost frightening how pigmented this one is it is such a cool color story you can see that this one is like a plum to a teal uh, duochrome i think this is such a smart mix between neutrals and greens cool tones cool tones, warm tones, brights, more sagey light ones, and then some neutrals, light ones, dark ones. I think she did so good with this color story, and I am not surprised. Like, this one sold out, and I think it's back in stock for the last time, unless it's sold out again, but it's just such a smart color story for someone who loves greens and neutrals, but maybe don't want to have too much of it. I think that this one was so smart. Personally, I will say that I do prefer the bigger palette. This is the big one. I think that this one is slightly better, even though I love a small color story. But this last row here, this blue one, I love blue eyeshadows. Blue eyeshadow is my favorite color of eyeshadow. And these sky blue, no teals, no turquoises, there's no green undertone, none of that, blah, 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 blah. It's blue. Love it. Love it. Love those kind of colors. And these like shimmers and also this like iridescent shade up here. It's so incredible. These greens, the purples. I love these tones. Do I think that this could have been edited down to a smaller palette? Yes. Do I still like the quality and the shades that are in here? Yes. There's nothing wrong with the quality. And sometimes I understand as someone who's myself done two collab palettes that sometimes it will be like, this is the packaging that we have, fill it with shades. Sometimes that's the way it is. And can I tell you, she filled it with really good ones, really, really good shades. I am so impressed with both of these palettes. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. I will link them down below. I don't know which ones are in stock and which ones are not in stock. I do have a call with Glam Light. It is a Jeshka, which it is on most places, and it will give you 15% off when you're shopping at Glam Light. And as I'm filming this, I'm waiting for my PR package of the Glam Light and Barbie collection. It looks so fun. I am so ready to dive into my Barbie fantasy. Okay, let's get into the other tart lippy that I talked about. This is the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. This one is in Peachy Beige, which is <laughs> Peachy Beige. 
This one is so beautiful and so luscious. This looks like you have a really hydrating gloss on your lips, but it has the convenience of a stick. But this one is a little bit more firmer in the stick. This has the perfect amount of firmness. <laughs> That's what she said. You can really glide it on without it being too goopy or too much or too little. It smells really nice. It feels really nice. It is a little bit plumping, but nothing uncomfortable at all. All in all, I think this is a beautiful lip product and this one went viral for a good reason. Definitely worth the hype. Really like it. If they release more colors, I could see myself getting another one. Can I, can I have an orange one? What? I want orange. I did not expect myself to like this product the way I like this product. But the more I use it, the more I love it. And I am as surprised as you are. But the Unearthly Vitality palette might be like a rainbow palette of my dreams. And it's not a true rainbow because there are no reds in here, but it's pinks instead. But this one just has really light colors, really dark colors. It has duochromes, it has shimmers, it has toppers, it has mid-tones, it has murkies, it has pastels, it has brights. It is just a mix of everything that I like with bright eyeshadows together with a matte white. What is not to love? And these shimmers are just, I did not expect them to be this duochrome smooth wonderfulness. Let me see if I can just... They're just so nice. Not that I didn't think that they were going to be beautiful, but like they're just so stunning. And I've had so much fun with this palette. So much more fun than I thought I was going to have. Not that I thought I was going to dislike it, but there's something about the tones in this palette. It just offers different things that makes me happy, like the mucky the pastel, the bright yellow, the matte white, the bright orange, and then the duochromes and purple. I like this one. I've really enjoyed this one. I'm so happy I have it. I also love this, um, what did I call it? Not holographic, but like dragon skin. It looks like that dragon skin uh, front and the holographic text. I really enjoyed this one. I also love that there are smaller pants. I hope they will continue with that. I think this palette is a winner and it, I did not expect to really love it. It was sent to me as PR. I was not planning to buy it, but I'm so happy I have it. I really, really like it. We are in top three and who thought, who thought that Makeup Revolution would even make a top 10 on my channel? But something happened. Something happened. I'm kind of interested in the brand again. And this cream bronzer, I have it in medium. This is the Ultra Cream Bronzer. It is so Good. This is one of the best cream bronzers from the drugstore that I've tried. And it is definitely, that is the hair, it is definitely one of the best I've tried this year. And I've tried a lot of cream bronzers. It is pigmented, but blendable. It is buildable. You can have a little, you can have a lot. It doesn't move your foundation. You can use a brush, you can use a sponge. I really like this one. I like the undertone. There are different colors to choose from. I got mine at Ulta, but it's available in other places as well. The packaging is like a plastic packaging, but it's like, it's not flimsy. It's not flimsy at all. It's like an okay packaging for being a drugstore product. And this was affordable. And I'm just very impressed because I've tried some concealers. I've tried some foundations. I've tried a bunch of things from Makeup Revolution and me liking like, cause even though this one hasn't the best longevity on me, it doesn't break up on me. It doesn't look horrible, but me liking two things from Makeup Revolution, it makes me happy. Cause I'm like, I don't want to dislike brands. Like I want to like brands. I want to like them. So I'm excited about that. This is probably the biggest shocker. Is that a bigger shocker than I loving the Makeup Revolution bronzer? I don't know. I had zero expectations on the Oracle Chrome Highlighter Palette by Bella Beauté Bar. Zero expectations. Let me see if I can just scooch a little bit to the side and I can put up the TikTok here where I'm swatching this one. This is so pretty. I cannot get over how, like you can, it doesn't look like anything here, but hopefully we're able to see something in here. It is just so smooth and so, 
and not soft but like effortless on the skin it doesn't look chunky it doesn't look heavy it just looks like a really good quality highlighter but it is like dual chrome and multi-chrome this is an incredible quality this is the sun this is the magician uh, high priestess is the green one do you, do you see that the lovers is the pink it is just i don't know what to say really it's just so dang pretty like look at that this is a greenish gold to a peach and look at this blue to a pink so you see a blue i see a pink and there, the green, and I see like a minty blue, but you see a green. And this one, I see a gold, and you see a pink. And this one is so fiery peach, it's almost scary. Like, these are so good, so high quality, and they just melt onto the skin. And they're pigmented enough so that you can use them as eyeshadow toppers as well, or in the corner highlights. I am so extremely impressed with the quality of this one and how great these look. I did not see that coming. Not that I didn't think I was going to like it. I just, I was floored by it. I was floored by it. I just really think that this is such a great product. But I have to give the number one spot to what I think is the foundation that will be battling for the best foundation of 2022. This is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation by Hourglass. I think for me, either this one or the Makeup Forever, the new HD foundation will be the best foundation of the year. This one is great. It is a soft matte. It's like a matte but not flat foundation that holds up like a boss. Looks natural and fresh, but not sticky, not dewy. It just looks like your skin. It is not hyper matte and it is not dewy. It is a natural finish. It is a medium coverage. It looks and wears wonderfully. It does not break down. It does not make me overly glowy. It also does not make me look cakey or dry. It is just an amazing foundation. And I have had to force myself to use other foundations because I used this for like two weeks straight. And I was like, okay, you have your thoughts on this. <laughs> You have other things to review, but I cannot recommend this one enough. I have the shade 7.5 and it is a great match for me. So that foundation definitely up and running for the best foundation of 2022. It is a killer good foundation. I cannot recommend it enough. It's a little bit expensive though. And so is the other one, if we're going to be honest, but I love this one. I think it's really great. And that was it. Those were all of my rankings. Let me know. Have you tried any of these products? Do you have any opinions about them? What is the best or the worst products that you have tried as of late? Do let me know down in the comments. And also thank you again, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this comment. I am one happy HelloFresh customer. I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. And I will see you again tomorrow for a new video. Bye!